It's Chris Bell with the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about dialing in your morning routine. And this is my latest and greatest morning routine 2021. My first morning routine probably happened two or three years ago where I first read this little book called The Miracle Morning. And they have a short version, which is like you do everything for a minute each, which I was doing. And so I was spending like five or six minutes doing a morning routine. It was super weak. I would wake up, I'd like do a minute of everything, affirmations, visualization, um, you know, reading. And we're going to talk about all those things here in this episode and in this video, but it's become a lot more of a process and very integral part of my life where even on weekends I'll wake up and, you know, my fiance will kind of maybe wake up around when I do and she'll head down, make some coffee, like turn the TV on and stuff. And I'm not throwing her under the bus. I'm just saying this isn't for everyone. Like I'm not upset that she doesn't do a morning routine with me or anything, but even on weekends, I'm so committed to this. It's so important to me that I have decided that I'm going to also do it on weekends and I'll spend about an hour doing my morning routine. And let's talk about it a little bit here. So the book that really changed the game for me and this is an older book cover. I think they have a newer one, but it's called The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. If you can see that on my screen, boom. Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, The Six Habits That Will Transform Your Life Before 8 a.m. And he talks about the SAVERS method, and that stands for silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing or journaling. And so you can make it your own. You don't have to do all these things every single day. You don't have to do these things at all, but a lot of books, a lot of routines that I've heard other people that are successful do, they include reading, it includes journaling, it includes meditating, right? So this is a nice little way of encompassing it all and making sure you get it done. And so, like I mentioned a couple of years ago, when I started, I started doing a morning routine. I'd spend five minutes and then I went to 10 minutes and now it's evolved to where it's like a one hour ritual every morning, about an hour. I don't time it or anything. I'm just guesstimating, but I'm going to run you through my schedule and you let me know what you think. If you do anything differently, let me know. If you heard anything today or you hear anything today that you want to implement, I'd love to know that as well. But my current routine as it stands, I wake up at 6.15 a.m. on weekdays. My fiance has a day job, so that's when the alarm goes off on weekends. We do sleep in, so I may sleep till eight or nine. I honestly sleep like nine hours on the weekend, and it's been super recharging. But on weekdays, I wake up at 6.15 a.m. I will go downstairs. We have a two-story townhouse that we're living in right now. I'll go downstairs, and I will immediately meditate for 10 minutes. Well, before that, first I got to go pee, right? I think everyone has to do that first thing in the morning. And then I go downstairs and I meditate for 10 minutes. After that, I put in my headphones and I start listening to affirmations that I recorded of myself. And I can literally pull this up. It's called Morning Affirmations. It is in a note and I've saved it in Google Drive. I've also made it available offline so I can listen to it on a plane, in a Uber, all kinds of things. And literally these are things that I listen to and program my mind with every day. So let me just play it through the speaker here. Real estate agent. I own several income producing properties. Clients beg for the opportunity to work with me. Anyway, it's literally four minutes long and I listen to it. It talks about my dream life, how I operate. I'm a high level agent and investor. I'm a real estate guru, not necessarily a guru. Those aren't the words that I use, but as I listen to that, I start to make a cup of coffee. Well, before that, I eat a quick breakfast while I'm listening to the app affirmation. So I usually scarf down a meal in like five or 10 minutes, listen to the affirmations. I might even start a little bit of a podcast, but then I make a cup of coffee and I head upstairs. So you can see that I'm not sitting there for an hour and going through the savers methodology, like word for word. And oh my gosh, I got a time every single second. I'm flexible with it. I've adapted it to make it my own where I still incorporate all those things into my morning, but at my own pace. And I also make sure to eat there so that by the time I'm done with my routine, I can go to the gym and I've digested, right? I'm not eating and then going to the gym five minutes later. So I've thought methodically about all these things. But I head upstairs, I listen to the same song every single day when I turn on um, the affirmations part of this or the visualization rather. And I really love this song. Uh, it's only by Odessa featuring Zyra or something. It's kind of like cool and travel-y, but this is what it sounds like. It just motivates me because I heard it on a few travel videos. So I will listen to that. I will watch uh, my vision board. I have it saved on my computer screen as well as my phone. I left the actual board in Houston when we moved because it was just, we had limited space in the U-Haul and it was a huge board, but I do have it saved. I do refer to it. And then I review 
a laminated sheet of paper that has my five-year goals on there of like what I'd like to achieve. And I also review a couple of my annual goals for this year, as well as another affirmation that's on one of my things here. So I have an affirmation on a sticky note. It's a little bit ghetto and sketchy, but it works, right? So I got my affirmation here and it says, I can do anything I set my mind to if I'm willing to pay the price for greatness. Saw that online and I really loved it. The other thing I wrote down, I consistently make $20,000 plus in income a month through my real estate business. And it says 20,000. I'm going to put a little plus there because that's really what I mean. I don't want to just limit myself to that. I want to make way more than that. I look at all those things. Then I read for 25 minutes kiss the fiance goodbye. She heads out the door, goes to work. So I finish my reading. I usually have about 10 minutes of reading left after she leaves. I then review. This is something that I did for myself. I review all my numbers and my goals. I have an Excel sheet. It's got the number of times that I meditate a day, how many times I work out a week. I track how many pages I read a day. It's a little intense, but I literally track everything from my net worth to how many workouts I've done this week. And so I review everything. I can see a quick snapshot. I've got a couple of tables and graphs and pie charts. So I see how much income have I made this year? What's in the pipeline? What deals are on the table? What are the deals that are happening now? What are the next steps? And so I know all my current tasks. I also open up Asana, which I've talked about. It's my project management system. I'm using the free version. It's awesome. You can do checklists for everything. And so I review all my current transactions, all my potential clients and prospects. And the cool thing is I quickly get a snapshot of how am I doing year to date? Where are my best next opportunities? Where am I stuck? Like what are the next steps that I need to take in certain areas? And I get a quick snapshot of everything. And then I have my journal that I do for the scribing portion. I do that in Google Sheets. I love writing stuff out too, but the searchability, being able to do control F and find today's date in past journals. I have 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. And I actually, fun fact, I just started the journal in, was it September 10th of 2018? So now I have, I can go back three years and see the journal. So I go back to today's date. I'm recording this on the 16th of September, but I can go back to like September 16th, 2018 and read that journal entry. And then I can go to 2019. I read that one. It's usually a quick one or two paragraphs. I read 2020 and then the morning of, after I read those last three years, it's a cool glimpse into the past of what I was doing, what I was struggling with, what I was thinking about. I type in my new one and it gives me perspective because I'm like, man, three years ago, I wasn't sure how to make money. I was struggling. I was worried about my credit card debt. And now I've got a freaking abundance of deals. Clients are leaving me five-star reviews. I've got thousands of dollars, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in savings and investments. I'm consistently putting money away. I no longer have that feeling of scarcity. I have this feeling of extreme abundance where I know any day that I just show up in the world in a state of play, I might meet someone, they might send me a referral. And three weeks later, I'll be cashing a check. We're getting a a commission check wired to me for five or $10,000. Like I've done it before. I know it's possible. And that's created this confidence where I can just show up every day and see what happens sometimes and go with the flow and amazing things come my way. But anyway, back to the routine. I do the journal, I review the past entries, and then I type today's entry. And so to kind of put a timeline, again, I wake up at 6.15, I do the meditation, I get the, I get my breakfast, I do um, make some coffee, head upstairs. So all of this stuff that I'm talking about, reviewing my goals, journaling, seeing where I'm at, seeing current transactions in real estate, this is all done by about 7.45 or 8 a.m. And so, I spend quite a bit of time on this, but it's so important to me that I don't feel like it's draining. I don't feel like it's time wasting. This is part of me making sure that I am evaluating. I'm like a captain in in the ocean. I'm looking at where I am. I'm looking at the map, making sure I'm still on track and course correcting if I need to along the way. And then I used to work out immediately after this, you know, I might finish reading, close the book, type the journals and then go to the gym but something I recently implemented just like this last week or two, I've been spending about an hour or two working after the morning routine, like while I'm in the zone, while I'm feeling motivated and I know what I need to work on, boom, I start hammering out some emails. I post a couple things on social media. Maybe I'll release my latest podcast if I haven't done that yet. You know, I make sure everything's uploaded and good to go. So I get a couple of wins under my belt. I feel like I'm not behind. Like I'm like, okay, cool. I'm getting ahead of today. I did a few things that I need to do. I replied to a couple emails where they were waiting on my response and I was the bottleneck. And now, boom, 10 o'clock, I can go take an hour, take a mental break, 
get a physical rigorous exercise in there. I might listen to a podcast or I might just chill and listen to music. You know, lately I've been listening to more music than I used to. If you listen to podcasts from a year or two ago, I was talking about how I listen to podcasts and audiobooks all the time, 24 seven. Now, honestly, I've been relaxing a little bit more, pulling back. I'll listen to podcasts and audiobooks when I walk the dog or I go on a bike ride, but when I'm at the gym, it's okay to throw on some music that you love to really get in the zone and just kind of disconnect for a little bit and just unplug from the constant chatter that we like to fill our minds with. And so I do the hour workout. I'll head home, rinse off, do a cold shower, like cold 30 seconds or whatever, freezing cold, because we have two different faucets, hot and cold. So the cold gets really cold. I do that and then I take my regular shower, change, put gel in the hair, you know, get ready for the day, so to say at 11 a.m. And boom, I've got the whole day to do whatever I want in most cases. I stack, the way I stack my meetings with people who book calls through Calendly and whatnot, those are in the afternoons and in the evenings. So I'll do Zoom calls, podcast interviews, clubhouse calls, intro calls with people who wanna possibly work together. All of that starts at one or two in the afternoon and that's how my whole morning is free to do my morning routine, to work out. If I meet someone random at the gym and I wanna to go to lunch with them like I did the other day, I might've talked about this on a previous podcast, I can do that because I also have coffee appointments at 10 a.m and lunch appointments at 12 p.m. that are open in case people want to book those. So no one can book other meeting types during those times. So I really, really recommend that you dial in your morning routine. I know, gosh, I don't know how long I've been talking here, but it sounds like a lot and it kind of is, but it's stacked on itself. Like I said, I used to do the six minute version of the Miracle Morning when I first started and then I determined that I loved it enough to start spending more time, you know, upping the reading to 25 minutes meditating for 10 minutes, um, doing affirmations and visualization and journaling, right? And reviewing where I am. So it started to develop. It, it wasn't all like this overnight where I woke up and started spending an hour on my morning routine, but I really love this place that I'm at and it gets me mentally clear. I start off the day strong. I know what my goals are. I know where I'm drifting, where I need to maybe pull things back. I know when I need to delegate something that I've been putting off for far too long, right? I'm in a very good place. And so when you dial in your morning routine, and again, The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, I might put a link up in the show notes or whatever if you wanna check it out. I'm in the Facebook group. There's a lot of great stuff, a lot of support and positivity. I've actually met Hal before when we were in Austin for a mastermind retreat. I, I saw him and his family and this was before COVID and everything. So I went up to him, I said, hello. I asked if you wouldn't mind if I got a quick picture with him. So I do have a picture with him at a Mozart's coffee house or something in Austin near Lake Travis or something. I can't remember exactly where it was, but the place was called Mozart and it was pretty good. So check it out. But that's it for this episode. I just really, really, really want to encourage you. If you don't have a morning routine, if you're waking up and you're just jumping into the day and you're just checking your phone and jumping on social media, replying to emails, you may think you're getting ahead of of things for the day, but really you're just starting to fill your mind with doubt and uncertainty and stress and anxiety, right? All these things of like, I have to do these things. I have to do all this stuff versus when you have this hour to prepare, by the way, my phone's on do not disturb for that whole morning routine where no one can call or text me. I get to focus on developing myself and preparing myself so that when I come at the day, like, dude, I'm, I'm kicking butt, you know, I'm showing up 110%, I'm energized, I got my workout in, I ate clean, I slept for eight hours or nine hours, like I am ready to go and I'm gonna outwork you and outbeat you because you probably got five hours of sleep, you're tired, you're stressed from all those emails you woke up and saw first thing in the morning and I am clear, I am focused, I know what I need to do, I know how to do it and I'm going to get it done, right? So just look at those different perspectives from waking up and being anxious to waking up and being freaking prepare like a warrior and you've been waiting for this moment your whole life. That's how you need to show up every single day. So that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for listening, for watching to the end. If you're on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, engage with me on Instagram, Chris Bello underscore happy to happy to connect. And yeah, I'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks so much for your time. Dial in your morning routine and I'll talk to you next time. Oh,